is all before my time too, but I hear all the stories of the 50s and 60s. Downtown was the place to be. Everybody worked downtown. You went shopping on the weekends downtown. It was just the place to be. When the mall moved in in the 70s, a lot of that retail just went to the southwest side of town. And then that's when downtown just started slowing down and just kind of became a ghost town. You know, there was still office buildings and stuff, but it wasn't that place to come and hang out. Now with everything going towards being local, spending your money local, you're seeing money being brought back into downtown, more entertainment options. So it's kind of becoming that place to hang out again in Wichita Falls. This is our newest song, man. It's called, it's called Love is a Two-Way Street, man. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a sidecar reference in there, man. Anywhere you go, man, so many people are wanting to just get up and leave this town, man. There's, there's something special about this town. There's something special about places like this. And it always brings me back, man. It doesn't matter where I'm at, I'll always, I'll always put Wichita Falls on the map. No matter how small or how big we are, it doesn't matter, man. I love this place. Uh, this song's called Love is a Two-Way Street. Mine and I had the privilege of being the first customers at the first ever brewery in Wichita Falls. Excellent atmosphere, fantastic service. Everything was great. We'll definitely return. Staff is amazing, and the location has this immediate, we're not in Wichita Falls anymore vibe. Once they told me about it, I really, I really thought, like, this is something that this place needs. This is going to do great. This is going to be big. I got excited because I met Joe and the brewmaster, and I knew that he knew exactly what he was doing. And then once I started moving into the kitchen, I met some of the kitchen staff, and I was like, man, we've got this handled. We've got, a, like, a passion for the art. If, I mean, it sounds stupid to say, but we've got a little bit of a passion for it. And I was like, I, I know this place is going to do great. All right. My full name is James Files Kirtley Little. Uh, I go by Files or Flow. Uh, I'm the sous chef, so I pretty much just kind of help design the recipes and work through and help train people to learn how to cook properly. Most people get tired at the end of the day. I just have like an excessive amount of energy. I don't know. I I get done doing something like this for 10 hours. I can still go for another 10 out there doing that. It's, like again, it's passions, you know, and things that you're passionate about are a lot, a lot more. Uh, less challenging, I guess, to the point, and they become, if you do what you love, you'll never work in your day in life, so that's kind of what the gears I'm heading towards. I, I've been told by people that are from here that they think Wichita Falls is always 10 years behind the trends. I think that's um, changing. When I got here at the end of 13, this city felt like a, an old city with real old ways of thinking and old school attitudes about leadership and that has absolutely changed over the last four years. We've got new leadership at the city, at the university, at the chamber, at, we're about to have new leadership at downtown development and just all across the town. It was just the right time, you know, all these different collisions of, of, of people that wanted to make downtown a great place again and this guy wanted to come back, and he met this other guy, and they talked to these people, and it's just this, it is just a series of collisions that gets any community to a point, you know? We're gonna be the city that we decide to be. And so with the Wichita Falls Brewing Company, it was just a good example of a guy that was from here, he had left, got into the beer business, became successful, and he wanted to come home. And so there's a great opportunity, he came home, happened to meet some guy that lives in his neighborhood that was also a craft beer fanatic and they got to, to talking and, and became partners. When I moved here two years ago, downtown um, was not even close to where it is now. And so my wife and I drove downtown and looked around and that was kind of the end of it, even though we live like two miles away. Even in the last two years, we've seen um, small development, but enough interest that uh, we included downtown into our, our mission statement, our, our vision as a whole, um, pretty much right away. 
we're spending a lot of time and effort now to look at other cities that have been successful to see how they did it. And to me, that's one of the things that had held us back is just that mindset of this is not who we are. Now it's changing into this is who we want to be. We have a different challenge than most breweries that are in larger cities where other breweries exist in the fact that we are the first production brewery and we want to get people that aren't into craft beer in here. So to do that, to kind of, you know, wave the carrot in front of their face, we plan on selling wines and other domestic beers as well as craft beers made in Texas, as well as carbonated water. And food. And root beer. You gotta have the guts to open up a business. Um, you've got to know what you want to do. We opened in March of 2012, and it took us about two years to actually make any money. It was really scary. Um, I myself didn't take um, a dime from this place for almost three years, so that was rough. Um, but I, I saw the potential. Like it just kind of kept getting better and better. Um, but you, you have to hang in there. You can't give up. Five months in, you're you know dying. You think that you're going to go. Um, belly up or something, you have to just keep going. You have to change something, cater to the customers. Um, I don't know, you just have to keep going. It was worth the risk. <laughs> if you're gonna make 40 a year, then why not make 40 a year doing what you love? Or you strike it rich doing what you love because you keep plugging away at it. People that, that kind of follow their passion in brewing and the brewing industry, especially on production side, it is an all-consuming thing. It does not turn off. You can't turn it off unless you're out of business. The people, they were nice. They knew the lives that came with dice. And for sure, I'd get to you by morning. And I don't despise having to drive. But I don't care how. I'm not okay with how the situation worked itself out because I was here from day one and this is not what I thought was going to happen as far as the end result. Just a few months after Wichita Falls' first ever brewery opened up in the old Pump Jack Diner location, its doors are closed for good. Yeah, former employees at Sidecar Brewery say they met with owners yesterday and were told because of finances the business could no longer survive. Just as I started to make my mark on a place and kind of feel at home, I feel like the, the rug was kind of pulled out from under me and now I'm left to start back at square one. But other than that, I'm glad I got the experiences that I got. I'm glad I got to work with the people that I did. And I'm happy in general for the time I spent here. So everybody else is sitting here having a good time, having fun, and I'm still kind of wrapped up in my own head thinking, what am I going to do next? Yeah. I spent a lot of time here. So on to the next chapter, I guess. You're right. You fucking moved the other piece. Oh. The time is right. The time is right. Uh, Look at that movie. I heard some some uh, positive feedback from some people. I think the challenge was was twofold. One, the location was not very visible, and so you weren't going to get much drive by traffic. And then two, you know, I've heard a lot of people say. I never heard about it. And that's always a challenge with a locally owned restaurant that you don't have the advertising dollars that a chain would have. And so you got to have something else going for you, whether it's word of mouth or a great social media presence or a location that is so visible people can't help but notice you. And unfortunately, that restaurant just didn't have that. So when they were open, even just before they opened, we obviously got the question, Hey, what do you think about a competitor opening up? You know, you've you've already put into your business plan. You're going to be Wichita Falls' first brewery, and now they're going to claim that title, etc. And we still hold the feeling to this day that the more the merrier. And when it comes to craft beer and creating a culture in a town, it seems like 
that community of, of beer is a little bit more close-knit um, and really kind of feeds off of each other and not necessarily in a competitive sense but um, just in creating this revolving door um, of basically what you would call like a social bar crawl. It was definitely a risk for those that had done it a few years ago of taking that that step of opening up a small business downtown not really sure if downtown's going to come back um, as those people have worked together to succeed and they started to prosper I think that inspired other small businesses to see downtown as a place to, to open up. Uh, when I moved here we had come across an old building that we had purchased and our plan was to put in a restaurant. Of course, you know, when you open, you don't know what to expect exactly. Um, I mean, restaurants is a risky business. Um, there's no guarantees that people are going to walk through the door. And of course, you know, for a restaurant to really be established, it needs to be up and running for a couple of years. And uh, we've what, we ran into it eight months, so we, you know, we still got a ways to go. But we saw an opportunity that this downtown was making a comeback, and we wanted to be a part of it. You know, I wish I, I wish I could be more mad about it, but I'm just not. There are certain things that you could tell it wasn't going right, but at the end of the day, it was not people. It was people not wanting to fucking put their head on the fucking on the guillotine. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't want to sacrifice everything to put your namesake out there, you're not ever gonna find your 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 dream. You're just gonna put yourself out there and be let down. It, it, if you fucking face adversity head on, spend a little fucking money, you will make money. This town is a fucking town of food and booze. There's no reason we couldn't make it. The reason we didn't make it is because they were afraid to fucking dive in. They were afraid to put their leg down and say, I'm willing to fucking fight for it. Seeing Sag Car Brewery close down, it broke my heart. I thought, you're only five months in. Like, that's nothing. You, like, you have to stick with it for a year or two. We very much wanted them to help build the beer culture. Here's to working in a brewery, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fucking hear that. The first brewery with Shuffle. First and <laughs> The first one in. Rest in peace. Yeah. And Joe said it before, hasn't said it enough. It was just the most amazing group of people. The Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Been First time I really yeah. fucking enjoyed it. Same, I fucking love this place. Change is hard. But this is also a migrant city between Midwestern State University and Shepherd Air Force Base and our manufacturing community. We've got people from all over the world here, and we always have. And so um, I, I'm not as concerned about you know, somebody being upset because outsiders are coming in to do things. Sometimes it takes somebody from out of town to, to say, I'm not beholden by whatever bias this city might have towards downtown. We're always our own worst enemies. And it's the people that have never left a city, have not traveled much, have never lived anywhere else, that say, well, it's just switched off falls. It'll never be any different. And then those of us, like me, come in from outside and we've been a lot of other places and say, oh no, there's something pretty cool here. And if we could just address this and this and this, we could be a great, great city. Without a worry, I looked around. You're in a hurry to escape this town. If I could tell you anything, if I could tell you anything.